Hi, I'm Lisa Kushner from For the Punks. In case you don't know, For the Punks is a publication for fans and creators to connect, learn, and grow with each other. Joining me today is Halo Boy. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm so excited that you're here with us. Um, I'm really excited because you have an album coming out fairly soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten a little bit of a taste of it, but what can you tell us? Like, what have you been working on in the last year? Um, I mean, this this album has been like even probably like two years in the making, like kind of from the beginning of COVID was when I first started making the first stuff for it. But um, yeah, I mean, there's Fame and Autopilot and Girl, which are already out, are going to be on the record. And then I have another single dropping on April 15th called Burn Down Hollywood. And um, I actually played that for the first time at the last show on March 10th and it went over quite well I thought <laughs> but um but yeah that's going to be dropping and then we'll probably do like two more singles and then the full album will come out in probably July there's no like set date yet but depending on like the timing of the singles it, it'll probably be like early July do you you feel like the singles together are all cohesive like there is an overarching theme for the album or is it just different singles from different times in your life? Oh, no, it's definitely like a cohesive theme for the album. Um, I'd say, I mean, I called it, the album is going to be called Sim City, which is going to be the also the first track on the record. And it's kind of like my experience moving to LA and like trying to navigate like the emotional side of things like maintaining relationships with people maintaining my own like mental health and everything while being in this very strange kind of almost like simulated reality that is Hollywood LA culture um at least like on the entertainment business side and you know and um I kind of paralleled that with kind of like a more of like a fictional like sci-fi exaggerated side of things which is where sim city comes in where it's like you're kind of almost like the matrix like you're you're dreaming you're like in some sort of simulation and, and you can't break out of it and um yeah like the the uh the record starts with that track and then i think it goes into fame next which is kind of like you you wake up out of this dream and you're you're still in uh this like you know it, it's it's like the same thing but it's real life mm -hmm. and um yeah I kind of went off on <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good you're good oh um, right but um but yeah definitely overarching theme to the album which I think is just maintaining like trying to you know find like love and happiness and everything while being in an environment that isn't very encouraging for those types of things and everything's very um, artificial. Where does like, where, where do you draw inspiration for like the visual aspects of your music? Because I know that's so heavily important for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of it comes from like different animes for sure. Um, a lot of like, like Blade Runner is another big one that has been inspiring. Um, just a, like a lot of like sci-fi type of stuff like that. Um, there's a, an anime called Cowboy Bebop, which was like the inspiration for the fame cover. Mm -hmm. If you see the anime, that'll be like really obvious <laughs> for you. Um, and then uh, there's like animes like Death Note and Psycho Pass and like Tokyo Ghoul that I've Kind of always drawn inspiration from but yeah definitely sure. definitely a lot of movies and animes <laughs> those are great and if anyone hasn't watched them i think those are like the classics that everyone needs to check out that's like a good starter pack yeah for sure i yeah. i always try to like if somebody's never seen anime before i'm like you gotta watch death note cowboy bebop attack on titan and tokyo ghoul I think I, I give them those four, like Attack on Titan, um, 
Cow or Attack on Titan and um, Death Note are kind of like in, in Tokyo Ghoul are probably like for more of like the story and then Cowboy Bebop's kind of like just for the aesthetic and the, yeah, the vibe. <laughs> for sure. Very exciting. Your new single com- is coming out in April, Burn Down Hollywood. What can you tell us specifically about that song? Like I, I kind of didn't realize it until just recently, like where I was kind of like, you know, when you, when you like submit it and everything for um, like when you put it into distribution, you kind of have to like write a little piece on it and kind of be like, this is what it's about. And I, and I was like, what's a simple way to put this? Because a lot of the songs I write aren't like, I'm not like, oh, it's just this like thesis statement and here's the song. Like it, mm-hmm. it's like kind of, sometimes I don't even know like what I'm trying to get out. And then, and then I write the song and then I hear it back later. I'm like, oh, that, yeah, that's like what I was clearly trying to say. But this one is like, when you move somewhere in this case like hollywood la like and somebody like ruins it for you mm-hmm. like like they change because of like their pursuit of like fame or whatever and and they start changing who they are as a person and it becomes a negative thing and it kind of like not only ruins like your relationship with the person but kind of ruins your perception of the whole place that you are and you get like kind of a bad feeling about it and you just like it's an exaggerated thing of course but like it, it's burned down Hollywood like you want to like just be rid of it like just destroy it like never see it again how do you feel like it is really hard in LA to stay yourself because you just want to fit into what the norm is here to get famous to get big and how do you stay true to yourself and how how have you done it for such a long time? I think it, I think that's something that you kind of have to decide on, like going into it and just no matter what, like stick to it. Like, because I, I didn't always live here. Like I, I was born in Colorado. I moved to San Diego, like when I was 18. And then I moved to London shortly after that for a year and then finally hit LA. And I think what I learned just wherever you are is like, you have to just continually like keep yourself in check and and make sure that you're not letting like other people tell you like who you have to be. And which happens a lot in LA, like surprisingly, like way more than anywhere else. Like out of all the places I've lived, like coming to LA, I was shocked at how much how much people like tell you who you have to be and and, like whether it's in the industry or people you surround yourself with or whatever it's like everything is like this is what you got to wear this is how you have to act you're not allowed to talk this way to these people and it's like everything's like there's so many rules and stuff and which is probably why I, I just kind of have like backed away from that and stay inside and just make music most of the time now but yeah um but yeah it was just it was hard to navigate at first but I, I think the biggest thing was just like you know staying separate from it almost like like uh just having the willpower to be like you know what like everyone's going out to this party or whatever but like I just want to stay home and like make music right now and like maybe it feels weird maybe I'll feel like left out or whatever but like at the end of the night I'm gonna feel better because I have a song I got something out I'm gonna feel more satisfied than if I went and like you know whatever try to impress people in a room like standing around trying to be cool yeah you got to prioritize your mental health over everything yeah that's that's the biggest thing and and like I I've seen a lot of people kind of like lose the plot, like just trying to, trying to like fit in basically, which is sad. And like, there's a lot of unhealthy things that people do in LA to try to fit in that, like, I'm not even referring to like drugs and stuff like, yeah, like that's like bad or whatever, but it's just like, even just mentally trying to fit in is like terrible for people because they, they like lose a sense of themselves and get like depressed and <laughs> kind of just hollow feeling. 
Yeah, and they forget, I feel like, why they came to LA in the first place. I've noticed yeah. that a lot, yeah. Yeah, no, I've seen a lot of people who come and they're like, they're like young, fresh artists and I'm like excited. I'm like, wow, you know, like to be 19 years old or something and like come into LA and be like, ready to demolish everything and make your way. And then like, they just spend a year after year just floating around, like kind of just wasting time and money and just going to whatever. And then, and then it's over. And like, I see that story happen a lot. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of scary and, and it kind of keeps me in check too. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, stay focused you know just do what you came here to do and you've done it well like even like switching gears a little bit you have so many song credits on for other artists as well like you've collaborated so much and I was wondering what is a project that you worked with another artist with that you're really proud of oh there's um yeah I've been producing and, and writing with other people for like a while now and like currently I'm working with this artist Sky Katz, who um, is, uh, I think she's like 17 at the moment, I think. And she's uh, like incredibly, she, she started with rap and she's like an incredibly talented rapper and lyricist and stuff. And we've been um, writing like some more melodic stuff and kind of moving into like pop and alt rock and, kind of a pop punk, but mixing in the rap and everything. And um, we have like pretty much a whole record done. And I'm pretty excited about that because she's already like got such like a, a star quality, but then also is like so young and has so much, has like all of her twenties to like grow still and everything. So I think that's gonna be like a really special thing to see that first record come out and then see like where she goes from there. Um, and I've been producing, uh, Jixi, of course, and I think all that music is great. That's been really, fun. I, I like working with, um, like female artists a lot because it's something that I can't do myself. It's like, I can kind of explore like a, a different side of like, or a different side, like vocally and everything. And like there's notes and things to say that I, I can't pull off saying myself. So I, I have a lot of fun with that. And um, I don't, I just tend not to like find myself working with as many male artists cause like I want to keep those songs for, my, for myself. Yeah. If, if I write a, a great song and it's like, it's like a song that like I want to sing, I'll, I'll just keep it at this point. I used to give more stuff away like when I was, um, first starting all of this and kind of had to like get my foot in the door and everything. But now it's uh, much more focused on the Halo Boys stuff. What's the difference between just writing for yourself versus writing for another artist? Or do you find that it's kind of the same? Um, it's very different actually. And it's something that took me a long time to learn. And I think it's something that a lot of people have trouble with because it's it's a kind of a weird little area to, to cross over and the biggest thing is like what you're emotionally attached to for me so if I write a song and I'm emotionally attached to it like it it's a real thing to me it's something about my life or something about the way I feel then I'm gonna at this point I'm gonna keep that song if I write a song and it's like maybe from a different person's perspective or it's like it's more of an imaginative thing where I'm like, oh, what if, uh, you know, this, what if there was a person that cheated on this person and then this, you know, like, like some kind of scenario that isn't really in my life and I just write a song for fun, I'll usually end up pitching those or giving those away to people because it's like, not something that is true to me. And then writing in sessions with people, um, it's all about like hearing the, the other artist's story. Like, 
you know, I like to kind of hang out with them first for an hour or two and just be like, what's going on in your life? What do you want to, what do you want to write a song about? Cause it's not my place to come in and write my own song and that, cause I'll just want to keep it then. Mm -hmm. and, and then they won't connect to it too. Cause it's not their song. It's like my song I was writing. So usually I'll, I'll kind of like have them lead the way with the emotional side of things and the subject matter. And then, you know, I'll like, provide like melodies or tweak words or be like, oh, this would be a cool hook or whatever, like, like that. But um, I learned not to like come and be like, I have a song for you yeah. already done. Cause that just, it's just kind of hard on everybody. It's not authentic, letting... yeah. And then they're like getting some, like a baby that isn't theirs <laughs> to take care of. How about, you know, at this point you've already kind of I hate using this term, but kind of established a brand where it's a lot of, it's mostly alternative. And do you feel like you've ever written a song, but it doesn't really fit into like the aesthetic that you've created? And like, like how does that work? Um, yeah, I, I definitely have. And I think something in this, in the process of like making this record that I've learned is that that kind of doesn't matter. Like if something's not like on brand or like not in the soundscape that I usually do, that doesn't matter to me as much anymore. And I'll just, I'll just put it out because there's, there is something cohesive that is maybe like my voice or something. But in the past, like I, I would have been like, oh, this doesn't sound, you know, this sounds more pop or this sounds or r &B or something maybe it's not for me but I think lately I've just been just saying whatever and <laughs> if it's a good song it's a good song it's a good song yeah and and I and I think too like I found myself vocally enough that like if I sing over like I just threw up a song on TikTok like a couple days ago that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like put out as release but I just put it on TikTok for fun and it's like over a banjo and I'm just like singing over a banjo, but it's like, which I would have never dreamed I would do. Yeah. Even like a year ago, I'd be like, what? I'm not putting out a song with a banjo <laughs> on it. But like it, you know, why not? I, I don't think there's any rules nowadays. Like that was, that was another cool thing about like that 2016 and onward wave of like, like like um, Will Peep and X and and all these artists that kind of like came in like uh, the late 2010s and into like 2020 and kind of in that transition period. One thing I noticed about all of them is they didn't like they weren't like genre specific. Like you know they'll they'll do like a trap song and then and then right after it'd be like a heavy metal grungy you know basement recorded song. And then after that, it's like a, you know, like a reggaeton song or something. It's like, there's no rules. And I just thought that was really cool. I was like, yeah, like, you know, I get bored. I used to get bored with like full albums of hearing the same singer and the same instrumentation for like 15 songs. And I could never make it through an album of like those kind of records and I think it's cool nowadays to like there's so many like different vocal effects and having different features and changing up the genre and everything throughout the album I think is great because it it's way more exciting that way yeah I I get frustrated when fans are upset that their favorite artist kind of switches it up a little but I think it's awesome to see how versatile a singer or a musician can be and express themselves in different ways. I personally think that's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, you know, the, they make one, an artist will make one record that's maybe guitar based drums or whatever. And that's great. They already made that record. Like, yeah. Do what else they can do. And people change and evolve. And so do their tastes. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'd be able to, continually just make this I can't I don't think I can make more than like two songs in the same soundscape like I kind of make songs in like sets of two at the most where I'm like 
I'm like, oh, this is kind of a cool vibe for this. And I'll throw this kind of bass and this kind of guitar in it or whatever. And then after that, I'm like, all right, I made that. What else am I going to do? And that's why on this next record too, there's such like a diversity of sounds. Like Fame has like saxophone in it and it's got like kind of a funk bass line. And then there's, you know, songs like uh, Autopilot, which is like kind of more like pop punk, yeah. you know, kind of rooted. And then, um, and then like, uh, like Burn Down Hollywood, the song coming out has almost like some like 60s elements in it, in the soundscape, like some like strings and just different things like that. It's, it's kind of like all over the place, but I think the thing that makes it cohesive is like the uh, energy that like I bring on top of the music. And I've seen you perform live and I was wondering, do you have any more shows planned? Because your music is so great. The vibe and the audience, you know, just getting pumped up and it's just like such a good time with your music. Because I know some music, you just like listen to it like at home and it's kind of peaceful, but because yours is so like, I don't know, like aggressive, but in the best way possible. I was just wondering, do you have any performances planned in the next year or so? Yeah, my next one is on April 29th, I believe, opening for Holy Wars. And it's at um, Harvard and Stone, I think it's the venue name. I'm just remembering this off the top of my head. But yeah, I think, <laughs> there I think April 20th, I'll be posting about it like on my socials and stuff, but April 29th, I think is the next one. Is there anything that you do pre-show to get ready to perform? Yeah, it's, I kind of have to like have like a moment of like peace and quiet almost. I know that's kind of opposite of like what a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like getting like jumping up and down and like mm -hmm. getting themselves worked up or whatever. But I kind of I'll do like a vocal warm up like an hour before. And then I just like to kind of like not talk and just kind of like think about what the performance is going to be and, and kind of like reconnect to the songs I'm going to sing. Cause it's, it's easy to like go up and, and sing a song and you're just going through the motions of it, but you're not like connected to it. Yeah. So I think it's important for me to like, just have that moment to it's, it's like theater or something like, yeah. I imagine I was never like a theater kid in school or whatever, but I imagine that's like yeah. how it would be. Like you have to kind of get into the character and like may you know connect with like what you're about to do. Yeah, and leave all your problems just off stage. Yeah, and and also like at this point too, like um, I'm still at the point where I'm like setting up a lot of like you know my own equipment and everything and. And like, I'm like the one in charge of all the technical side of things and the production of the show. So I have to like get that ready and be in like technical mode and make sure all the mics and you know, all the inputs are like sorted and everything's leveled. Yeah. And then I have to like let that go and get back into like artist mode. <laughs> So for, mul for multiple singles, you've already released music videos. And I was, I'm curious to find out um, how much input did you have on like the visual aspects or did you just like go to a director and, and just give them the song and kind of rely on their vision? Um, it's like a, kind of a mix of both. I, I definitely am very like picky with like how things look and that everything's like true to what I want it to be but then also it kind of goes in stages it's like three stages to me like the first stage is I'll bring a mood board and references and and like my idea of what I've envisioned the music video to be in my head and then I'll bring that to like the director or if I'm just doing it myself I'll you know skip that but um, and this for like fame and autopilot, I did it with um, Eric Rojas, who's a really great director. And and then I'll be like, what can we do? Like, here's my vision. Like, what can we accomplish for like the budget we have and our resources and stuff? And then he'll kind of like adapt it with what he knows is possible. Mm -hmm. And then after that, 
we kind of like half plan it and then the rest of it we just kind of leave up to like the day of the shoot just letting things naturally happen because mm -hmm. that's when like the coolest stuff happens if you try to plan stuff like a hundred percent and go into the shoot and make it happen exactly mm -hmm. like that especially like on a lower budget you're gonna yeah. end up just being disappointed and everything falls apart mm -hmm. so it's kind of yeah it's like initial vision then edit, uh, editing it with like the director and adapting it and then day of like kind of adapting it more depending on just like the creative flow of things what's something that you filmed the day of that just turned out amazing in the music like in any of your music videos oh definitely um in fame one of the coolest things that happened is I wanted to uh, get that egg chair, that mm -hmm. it, like, like that men in black type chair. And it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be like a, more of like a straight on angle in, you know, just like with, with a white backdrop. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, we realized that the, the uh, sound stage that it was on with like the, the white psych mm -hmm. had like a spinning, surface on it oh, like, like, yeah. maybe, like car commercials in there or something and like the car rotates so like oh, that could be cool and then and then we put the chair in the middle and then eric put the uh like a fisheye lens like really close like mm -hmm. it was supposed to be like a far wide shot but he put it yeah. like really close kind of upward and then i was like leaning way forward in the chair and then we just started rotating the the whole platform which then kind of like as it was rotating was revealing like the ceiling and kind of like the the set framework mm -hmm. kind of breaking the the fourth wall really but we we kind of thought that was cool because it's like what you know the song is like about somebody that's like obsessed with like how they look and and you know the whole perception of fame and everything and and then we we're like you know what like this looks cool like rotating and you see the cameras and you see the lights yeah. and everything's like you know breaking down like that so that whole sh shot which is like a pretty consistent thing through the whole video was like all made up on the spot and then um and then another thing too is like there is a maintenance closet mm -hmm. that we uh like opened up and we're like oh this could be cool we took like a night vision camera in there and just shot like some performance takes like in this like dingy closet yeah and that's in the video too and i i think actually i think most of that video was kind of made up on the spot and, and it's still true to like the original vision like with the aesthetic and the coloring and stuff but all the angles and like the whole way everything came together was like made up like on the spot that day and you couldn't you would have never known that it looks so well done. It looks like everything was just super thought out. I would have never guessed that that was just like something that was made up on the spot. So job well done. <laughs> what advice would you have for someone who's looking to get into music but doesn't really know where to start? The most important thing is to get in, first of all, get into it for the right reasons. If you're getting into it to make money or to be famous or to be liked, that's not the reason to get into it because you'll be very disappointed and you'll like get strung out on just trying to please people at that point trying to please a and r's trying to please your fans or whatever um so you got to do it for yourself and and uh make honest art that you connect with that you're happy with with like for the rest of your life you know that you're like you know not you're not following trends or anything like that you're just making what you want to make and then um i would encourage anybody nowadays that's looking to like make music to learn how to produce because that's been a huge help for me like i i don't i don't know where i would be if i didn't know how to like make my own music if i had to like rely on other people it would, like that's kind of a scary thought because especially in LA, that's just like, you don't want to be in the hands of like other people and 
produce my own stuff has like helped me like where I can I can make a song a day if I want and no one's gonna stop me yeah and um so yeah definitely um learn to produce if you can at least on a basic level to where you can like get ideas down and then um research like where things come from if you like an aesthetic of something or a sound of something like take the time to like dig into it find out like where its roots are find out why why it's cool why why you like it why you connect with it and like you know it's like anything like if you learn skateboarding or you're learning to be a chef or something like you got to put in the time to to like know your craft and then that'll help you do it better and better as you keep going um and yeah i mean that that's kind of the main thing really and then and also like for anything too not just music like your uh work ethic has to be like really intense like you you have to move forward every day even if it's just a little bit you have to move forward every day like even if it's like you get up and you write one line of a song or, or you make some phone calls or you know return an email or whatever it is like do something for your art every day that that helps you move forward because if you're trying to get from point A to point B and you move towards point B, like 100% of the time, you'll make it to point B. The question is just like how long, but it's not, it's not a question of if anymore. Yeah. And it's, music's an interesting thing because you don't have someone telling you, hey, you should be doing this. It all yeah. comes from yourself. And if yeah. you don't do it, then it's never going to get accomplished. No, nobody's gonna do it for you. Yeah. Is, is the thing. I, I think I see that a lot too, is like people say, oh, I wanna be an artist. And then they kind of look around for, you know, to for people to produce them, for people to sign them, to like throw money at their project and stuff. And it's like, the reality is nobody really cares to do that because everything like you can have the greatest vision of your what your artist project is going to be like in your head but no one can see that yeah just in your head you have to you have to like show the world like who you are and and get people invested and get people excited about it and by the time and and you just have to like do it yourself really especially nowadays like it's all about like self-drive and then by the time you don't need anybody else anymore that's when people will want to become a part of it but <laughs> yeah no it's changed in the industry i think over the last decade where before maybe you can get signed if you have a vision but now like record labels want to see that you have people invested in your craft because it's so competitive especially with social media like anyone and everyone can be an artist but like what makes you special what makes you stand out and they have to see that yeah for sure. I mean, labels are essentially just like investors now. Yeah. And if you, I always like compare it to other things too. Like if, if you were starting a coffee shop or something and, and you wanted Starbucks to like, you know, buy your, you know, like buy your brand or whatever and sell it on their shelves, like you have to get to a certain point. Like you have to, show that people like it and there has to be like some numbers going on and stuff and like if you're not at that point yet that shouldn't be your concern your concern should be selling coffee to like people like on your block or on wherever your business is and like yeah. getting a good response there and when you're it's it's a very odd i don't know where it comes from maybe it's like something that started in the 80s more or something when like bands were like submitting their mixtapes or whatever but like this whole idea of like wanting to be signed and like kind of go like corporate mm -hmm. kind of a very weird thing to me for art because it's 
that's not really what art is. Art's a very personal thing and there's no right or wrong way to make art. But like everybody's trying to like make the McDonald's hamburger of, of music and, and like yeah. have it the next big chain restaurant. But like, it's just kind of, it's kind of odd to me. And it goes back to your album that's coming out. It's that Hollywood mindset of I want to get uh, famous and rich as quickly as possible. And yeah, that's the downfall of many people. So yeah. And, and, and like another subject that I touch on in the album a lot is like when, and I felt this way too, like, you know, wanting to become famous and rich and stuff often stems from wanting to be loved by like, whether it's like someone that you love, like an individual person or loved by like multiple people or whatever. And I think that's like a very real thing too. Like, you know, like people are like, oh, they just want to be famous or they're, they're just in it for the money or whatever. But like, usually it goes deeper than that. Like people maybe want the money because they want to like help their family out or they want to have enough money to be able to get, you know, impress a partner, you know, get a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case may be. And that's, that's like a, a very um, prominent theme in the album, because I, I felt that way too, like, like, I'm in a good place now. But like, I, you know, there, of course, I've had times where I'm like, oh, I, I just wish like, like, you know, I could just sign to a label like right now or whatever. And it would just be so nice to be able to like pay rent and like, not be like stressed every day about money and be able to like, you know, go on some dates or whatever and like be able to like flex a little bit here and there and, you know, yeah. like, like that would be great. But, but like, that's just not the, the right, that shouldn't be your, your uh, main motivating factor to, to make art. And it takes, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of like, self-reflecting and, and just like a, a bit of like maturity I think to like get past that and like back to the roots of like why you're doing what you do and it's I feel like it's the little wins that kind of keep you motivated to stay on track of, with of your passion you know like when mm -hmm. things are going your way a little bit even if they're it's not something like super big or super crazy it still shows that there's potential to grow and you just got to keep at it. It's, I feel like a lot of people start doing something and when they don't see results right away, they just drop it. And it's if yeah, for sure. going and going, it's not even about who's like the most talented, honestly, at this point, not at all. who's staying in the game the longest. Yeah. Like who, who's just, like I said, moving forward every day. And like, I'll, I'll see, like, I mean, I, since I like produce other artists and stuff too, I, I kind of have an eye for this, but like, I'll see certain artists that I, I feel like, you know, personally, like, I don't, I don't really like their music that much or they're, you know, it's like, you know, it's okay. But I see like the drive behind it and I'm like, they're going to make it for sure. Yeah. And they do. And then I see other artists that have amazing art. And I'm like, wow, I, I wish this needs to be in the world, but like the, the artists themselves is just not like motivated. Yeah. And they're just, you know, hanging out or whatever. And, and I know that they're not going to make it and then they don't. And it's really sad, but like, I can always tell who's going to really do it by like seeing that drive. And I wish it was, I wish you could just write a great song and just kind of throw it out in the world and everybody would receive it. But it's just not the case. <laughs> yeah, your album's coming out. Where can people follow you to get more information about releases and shows and everything? Uh, my two main like social platforms now are Instagram and TikTok. Mm -hmm. TikTok's like my main one now. I've kind of like transitioned over to that because because I think it's more fun and you can connect with people a lot easier. It's more accessible, yeah. Yeah, but both of them, it's the Halo Boy is my tag but if you also just search halo boy it should come up and then spotify and apple and everything is you know you can stream my music on any platform and everyone should do that after watching this interview 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today and taking time out of your day to talk. Having you.